Hello and welcome to Jamie's Motion Graphics, episode 15! Today we're making a polygon animation, and it looks a little bit like this. This tutorial is based on a tutorial I found elsewhere on the internet on videocopilot.net. If you want to see the original one, go there and um, yeah, just watch it. Anyway, everything has been made in After Effects as always, and everything has been made from scratch. And I will show you step by step how you can make it yourself. Okay, here we are in After Effects. We are going to start off with a new composition. It is going to be 720, 1280 as, as usual. And we're going to start off with a layer. I uh, already have a comp because, um, well, I already did some stuff for it. So we're going to start off by uh, creating radio waves. If you uh, don't have this, well, select it already like I did. Just uh, go to your effects and presets, type in radio and you will see radio waves pop up. Just drop them onto your uh, your layer and then we can address all of this um, in a moment. First of all, we're going to set this um, uh, this thing to mask, but we need a mask to actually use this. Uh, so go to your middle and just drop on a mask by selecting your uh, polygon tool and your layer at the same time. And once you do that, you should be able to make this. So I'm going to make it five-sided with page, uh, sorry, not page up, uh, with the up and down keys, you can actually change the, the amount of points on there. So you can make it as many or as few as you want. Up to three, I believe. Yeah, after three it doesn't work anymore, so you can't draw lines with it, surprisingly enough. So hold shift to, um, to line it up properly. And um, yeah, we're going to make it a little bit bigger than this. I guess this was a little bit over eager of me. So yeah, just um, drag it out, hold shift, and then let go. I'm going to delete mask one because it was just too small. I want uh, the detail, I don't know if it carries over the detail on a small mask, but uh, I'm assuming it does. Then mask is going to be mask two. Uh, normally I think this is over like this, so just click it and then set it to mask two. And um, it should provide us with, there you go. These nice little, um, well, nice little uh, polygons, I guess. We're going to turn off the mask so that we can't see it anymore. And now instead of circles, you have your polygon. And if you edit your polygon, it will edit the, well, this. It's, it's fairly easy. So um, out of that, we're going to add some more of these polygons. We're going to set the expansion to a little bit higher so that there's a little more room between them and um, no well, well maybe maybe not maybe I should just set it to less yeah because I don't want it to be the entire screen white that would look weird um, for the rest I don't want fade out time and I do want a lifespan to be uh, kind of shorter than it normally is so let's see where we are Currently we are over there. Let's set the lifespan to actually, well, reduce the polygons here. So you can see there are all sharp lines here. If you turn on the fade time, then it will be, it will fade out over time and we really don't want that. So outside of this, uh, we're basically done for, um, for our polygon here. Uh, we can add some more effects later, but for now, I think this is fine. Uh, yeah, the polygon is there, it's generating multiple things. We can change things like color over time, so let's say at uh, two seconds, which is when it ends, we want it to be green. Let's take a nice light green this time, and only take like these very saturated colors. And this time I won't do that. So here we're going to make it blue. Um, yeah, there you go, blue. And then over time it will change from being blue to being green. And that's what we want. So um, yeah, you can you can change it however you want, obviously. Uh, it, it just seems that this is the way to go, like to change it only twice. You can change it multiple times if you really want to. So go to 201. Uh, Oh no, two first. Uh, our, our 
animation or this part of the animation is going to be two seconds long. So go to two, then set the frequency uh, to whatever it was when you had the right thing. Go to 201 and then set the frequency to zero. That means that up until this point, so up until the two seconds, it will generate waves and then after that it will not generate waves. Easy, right? So the effect will end and that allows us to use it for the rest. Um, I'm also going to change the start and end width. Start width I'm going to set to 10, end width, yeah, let's, uh, let's make that change over time. Um, we're going to just set a keyframe here at uh, 2 seconds. I'm going to start with the start though. So let's say that um, our end width here is going to be 5. Uh, I don't know how small that is, so you can see in the end of your uh, of your animation. So this is five as your uh, as your end width, because uh, here it it says uh, parameters are set at birth, which means that whatever they get when they're born, that's what they're going to remember. So even though it changes over time, they still only remember what they had when they were born or created, whatever you want to say. So let's uh, set this to more and now you will see that the first one will actually grow in size and if you don't like that then you can change that. I personally don't like it so I'm going to change it. I'm going to set this to 10. I want the first ones to be uh, small and then the last ones to be bigger. So let's say set this to let's say 30 and that way we will have some bigger ones and you will see, you can see them grow and then the last one is going to be small again at least that's what we're going to try to do so currently it is big um, I don't know when it's being born the last one so yeah it's right around here this is actually the pixel or the frame so at that point we're going to set the thing to um, to 5 again and then the one before it we can actually up that quite a bit let's set it to 40 maybe even more and that way our last one is going to be small and as you can see that actually looks quite interesting we'll go to that same thing and we're going to set a unique color for that one so let's make it pink because it's completely different from all of the stuff that we did before and then set this one the one that we had in the frame before it so it will change it will still change to green only the the last one will be pink now and there you see it so it's just a little color effect and we're going to see that color effect in our final result quite heavily so I do recommend that you do something of the sort just a nice little color effect so now on to the actual how do we make this into uh, well this nice staggered effect we're going to just make a new solid because that is where the trick lies make a new solid uh, the color doesn't matter but pick something different from what you had because well you can distinguish between them a little bit easier uh, yeah, let's first of all rename these. So you can right click rema uh, rename or just hit the return key, not the enter key, but the return key. That's the one next to your uh, numpad. Uh, this one is going to be polygons. This one is going to be um, the. Hang on. Uh, this one is going to be the. the, 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 the uh, what was it called? Gradient. And our gradient is going to be a gradient. So right click it, um, make it into, hang on, where are you? Layer styles, gradient overlay. And that should work for us, hang on, there you go. Uh, I actually double clicked it or did something to it so that uh, we couldn't see it. But yeah, this is not the one that we want. We want to have uh, the overlay actually be um, what's it called? Uh, angular. So go to layer styles here in your thingy, uh, gradient overlay, and then we're going to go from linear to angle, and that makes it look like this. So now we're going to make this, and this is kind of a trick, just select your layer, 
uh, go to layer precompose and uh, well name it something it doesn't really matter but make sure you have move all attributes to the new composition not the other one because it won't work if you do so um, once you have this you can uh, turn it off and you get back to your uh, original and now we go new um, let's make it I don't know uh, adjustment layer I think yeah that would be good let's let's do this immediately so the adjustment layer is going to have time displacement on it and time displacement is the effect that we're looking for so for the for the displacement layer we're going to use gradient comp and for the time resolution we're going to hit 8 and you can immediately see what it what that's doing it's immediately getting to the point where we can see our uh, our animation so um, yeah if you're not really happy with it you can uh, change things like max displacement I, I like it when it's a little bit uh, smaller I also like it when it fits but that's all up to you so um, yeah you can do whatever you want uh, currently I think I will stick with 0 0.5 and there you go so um, currently it is set to yeah this is uh, kind of weird it now has in the beginning a little bit of um, residual motion so just drag out your polygons until that is gone and now it will start at zero and just fill in the screen there you go so what is what this looks like is um, it will just move around like that that's because the time effect that you just put on here the time displacement effect actually takes the layer that you made the gradient comp and says this is the time so this is time zero the white and the black is time two in this case so when the effect ends so it will just say okay we'll start here and then go to here but this one is already ahead of this so this one will lag behind on the rest that's basically how it works it's um, maybe a little bit complex to understand but just yeah trust me the color is an indication of how much time has passed and so even though we're starting at like half a second uh, this one already has things on it whereas so the, the the one the last part so this part only starts doing things at about one second well 28 it will start creating things and then moving outwards of course it will generate more and more crap so that is kind of our general concept here now let's um, let's add some more stuff because well we do want more stuff we always want more stuff so uh, let's add a shape layer and make something nice we're going to create the same polygon or a similar polygon and hit shift don't forget that we're going to go into that polygon say well the fill delete we don't need that we're going to just go with stroke the stroke color is obviously not going to be black we're going to pick white it's a, it's a nice bright color it's cool and that should be good enough so now we're going to go to dashes we're going to add some dashes and just hit the plus key once more then you get the gap control and the gap control allows you to position your uh, your things as you can see Let's, uh, let's up the stroke width a little bit so we can see what they are. Currently, they're just little bits of, um, well, of line. And if we reduce the gap, then we're going to have more of them. But that is not what we want. We want to set the dash to zero, so they disappear. And then we're going to set the uh, line cap to round cap. And then you can see what's happening. It adds a cap to the beginning and the end, but because the line size is zero, so the line length, I should say, uh, it actually becomes like that. So yeah, we're going to set the stroke width to a little bit less. We're going to have nice big uh, balls here. And well, currently it doesn't really do anything. So first of all, we're going to have to scale them to, to see where they actually are. So go to the transform here or just hit S for scale and just set them to the size that you want. I want them outside of my uh, my comp. 
out of the rest basically. And that should be good enough. So I don't need the transforms anymore. We're now going to say, okay, we want that same effect. So the the effect of the uh, adjustment layer of the time thingy, we want that on our shape layer as well. The thing is, if you do it like this, nothing will happen. So your layer still looks the same because it doesn't have time variance. It doesn't do anything over time. So what you need to do is you need to pick something to change over time. And um, yeah, I guess we can make the uh, stroke width, for example, change over time. So let's say in the beginning it is 1. And in the end, so at 2 seconds, it is going to be uh, 20. That's what we had before. Those are the nice big balls. You can already see that there is a difference between them. Okay, let's make it a little more interesting and let's add another one to it. And then we can uh, we can move them around because, well, they, they do disappear in the end. Um, yeah, set the last one to zero so that they actually disappear. So now we can, uh, can kind of change these around to see what we want out of this. So currently they're starting to come to life, then they're going to grow, and then they're going to shrink again. And that is, well, that's exactly the effect that we were looking for. Now you have to, uh, you have to time it correctly. Oh, that was not what I intended to do. Apparently I did nothing. But I intended to click next to it so you can actually see the effect in action. Um, so currently, as time is zero, you can see that there are already little little dots there. So yeah, we're going to set this to zero instead. I did not know that that, that was going to happen. I kind of assumed they would just be small enough. So currently we have time dependence, which means that now it's going to apply the same effect on our layer. So if this is the timing you want, then good for you, you already found it. If this is not the timing that you want, then just go to your layer and just drag it over time. So if you want to delay it a little bit, that is fine. So like you maybe want to start it like over here somewhere. So it's a little bit later than the other one. And then it times out before the other one, which is fine. It's all up to you. You can just play around with it. It, uh, it should be easy enough. So what else can we do? We can actually uh, just, just copy paste this one, um, the entire shape layer. So duplicate, uh, it's also an add, edit duplicate, but control D, just one of those keys to remember. And instead of making it this big, we're going to actually make it a lot smaller. So hit the S for scale and just make it a lot smaller so that it's in the end. Also, we're going to wait for everything to be done here. Now there's a little bit of space in the middle because everything has moved away from it. Those are the waves moving outwards, by the way, it's just that it's different over time. So we're going to put the, the balls in there. I may actually need to brighten them up a little bit. We make them a little bit bigger. Not too much. Uh, I may need to adjust the amount of um, or, or the size of them, so the amount of visibility. Uh, currently, yeah, they're going to show up, but if you don't like the size, just go to your middle point here, or just hit U, then you can see them, but just up it until you're satisfied with it. So I'm going to put it to 40, making them twice as big, and that way you can actually see them a little bit better. If you don't want that, that's fine too. So I currently don't like the fact that my ball here gets cut in half. I, uh, I noticed it, which means that other people are going to notice it as well, which means that that is not good. So to avoid that, we're going to go to shape layer and go to the, um, where are you, dashes, and go to the gap. So make sure that yeah, once you have a little bit of vision on it, you have a gap se selected that actually 
prevents that, but apparently you can't do that. Okay, offset then. There you go. Offset will pull it away from um, from that endpoint. I'm going to put this one right in front of it, and hopefully that will resolve the first one as well. Yeah. So the first one and the last one are now complete because of the offset, and it's only a little bit, so you're not even going to notice it. So it's not a different effect now or anything like that. Um, I would like it to be a little bit faster. There are too many dots on the screen basically. And I don't like that. So let's see. It's it's all up to you of course. You're, you're kind of designing an effect here. So yeah, now the dots differ too much in, in strength. Let's This is full, okay. Uh, because, well, I want to have like small, bigger, big, uh, or a few big ones and then smaller again, but it seems that it can't do that. So maybe I just mistimed that a little bit. I don't know. It seems, um, it seems weird that we have two similar sized shapes and then two bigger sized shapes and then three really big ones. Well, this one is bigger. So kind of they kind of form in pairs at the moment, which is kind of strange because I'm setting it up to be just well, different size every tick, every frame, which is kind of weird. Anyhow, maybe I can solve it by something else, but for now I'm just going to do it like this. So just drag it out a little bit. You can, by the way, make the entire effect just last a lot longer and solve these problems that way. It still shows up in two smalls, two bigger ones, yeah, and then two, and then these are four the same, and then smaller ones again. So maybe I should just try to do it like that and kind of, yeah, I don't know. I don't like it, but that's the way it is currently, I guess. Yeah, here, these are exactly the same size, which is kind of weird. So you can, of course, individually control them if you want to by um, by making this uh, this stroke width into something that just jumps from uh, from let's say one to five just before the generation of the next one. But yeah, this should work. I just don't understand why it's not. But moving on. So the second one was fine, by the way. That that one is not going to be very noticeable anyway. And maybe. Make it a little bit smaller, or just drag it out a little bit more, I don't know. Uh, we can do whatever, 30 I guess, just make it a little less noticeable. Anyhow, once we have done this, we're kind of done with the effect. So this is the effect as it's going to be. Now we're going to add on some, uh, some details. So we're going to uh, make a new composition because we don't want to deal with all of this stuff that we just did. We want to just start with just putting this entire composition, which is comp4, into that. So comp4 is now um, the entire animation. So yeah, this is, that's just the way it is. It's not really difficult to understand, I'm assuming. So now we're going to kind of beautify it. We, we can um, add some, I don't know, uh, let's, let's add tint at least. So we're going to duplicate this one. Uh, control, no, 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 first, that's that's the first thing we need to do. First we're going to add, at two seconds, I want the effect to end. Currently it ends at, right here, uh, 5.04. But I only want to have two seconds. So just right click the layer, uh, go time, enable time remapping. Go to the last point of your animation. You can uh, search it by page up, page down. Go to the last point, make a keyframe. There's already one at zero, so I don't really mind that. And just drag that keyframe to two seconds. So once it's at two seconds, you will see that the entire thing has moved up and everything is just faster now automatically so yeah that's the way time remapping works I'm um, I'm just going to uh, leave it at that you can also of course uh, 
make kind of a, a, a pause in the middle. So if you're saying like, okay, I want to have slow motion in the middle, just take two keyframes, one and two, and just select the first and the, or the, well the the end of the slow motion and the end, and drag them out a little bit. Let's say one more second, and now you will see that in the beginning it's normal speed, then it almost freezes, it goes really slowly, and then it goes normal speed again. Uh, that can be a really nice effect. Um, I'm currently not going to use it. I'm just going to uh, do it like this. Okay, we're going to duplicate this entire layer, Control D, and the bottom one is going to get tint on it, which is a shadow effect. Well, it's not actually a shadow effect, but that's where we're going to use it for. Uh, set this one to black as well, both of them will be black, and that means everything is black, and then, yeah, that's the way it is. So currently under this one there is another one, and that's black, but we're going to need a um, solid, well, an under layer, I guess, to, uh, to see what's happening. So, oh, making the white probably not the best plan. Let's change that to like grayish, so we can actually see the white balls as well. So currently this is what it looks like, yeah, except for the gray, which looks really weird, or makes it look really weird. But we're going to try to make this black one actually come out of it. So we can do that in several ways. We can first of all just move it. If we just move the entire composition like over a few pixels, you already have a shadow effect. And that can actually be really nice. So th if, if this is what you want, you will have a very consistent shadow on everything. So everything will now have a shadow. And if that's what you want, it really makes it more of a 3D effect. And the further you draw it out, by the way, the further it, um, let's see, position. So if you drag it out even further, it will create more distance between the ground plane and your effect. So this is a lot bigger, and now you can see that it's really becoming more of a 3D element. So um, if this is what you're looking for, then yeah, that's, that's really cool. Uh, on the other hand, you can also just say, I want to, I'm going to duplicate it. I want to reset the position on this one. Uh, so right click the position, reset. And now it's underneath it again. You can also use, um, what was it called? Scale wipe. So CC scale wipe, put it on the, your uh, composition and then just wipe it. It's, um, it kind of uses the, a, a similar way of doing that. Uh, hang on, yeah, stretch is going to be well, we're going to have to use minus if we use 50 degrees, but um, where are you? Normally it's like minus 0 0.3 is enough. So um, I don't know why it's not showing up. Oh, because I turned it off. That would make sense. Minus 0 0.3. There you go. Now you only have shadow on this side. So like not on this side, which is kind of a weird effect, but it can be a design choice. Uh, yeah, it's it's just it's all up to you. Just make it uh, well. Minus will take it to the bottom left in this case. If you want it to be in the bottom left naturally, then just go for 0 0.3 and change this one. It um, no, 0 comma 3, and it does the same thing. I personally like the other one better. So I like this one better. It makes way more shadows and it looks way more realistic. Um, I don't like the amount of um, displacement that I did though. So we're going to reset it and move it again. But now only a small amount, let's say this much. And it, it really looks like it's 3D now. The problem with the previous one was that my um, shadow bars here were falling under the next layer. And I like the shadows. So um, yeah, it's really more of a 3D element. So yeah, do we now have to throw away this other one? No, we don't. We can we can use it for something else. I'm going to put it. No, I can just leave it. Never mind. 
Um, my position is reset, so I don't need that. Uh, we're going to use the scale wipe to stretch the other way. Make the, uh, the colors into, let's say, a bluish color. Everything is blue, so it's just no, darker blue. I need darker blue. Like that. And we're going to set the other one to dark blue as well. So now the entire thing is dark blue. We're going to stretch it out, as I said, uh, until it looks like a shadow. The shadow that we would like. Um, I guess this is fine. Let's see how that changes over time. Yeah, that's fine. Um, hit the T for transparency or opacity. Just set it to something lower. We can adjust it if we don't like it in the final composition. But um, yeah, that's the way it goes. Now we have a shadow and we can actually set it to multiply if we want to. Um, let's say, oh, where are you? Up here. Multiply. It makes it uh, gray because the background is gray, but if we have a slightly more colored background, then yes, that is going to change that as well. It's all up to you. You can also set it to screen, which makes it a little bit of a different effect. It becomes more of a light now than an actual shadow. It's it's all, all these effects. You need to just try them out, learn how they work, and just say, like, okay, that's the one I want. So um, currently, I think we're kind of done here. We can uh, wipe out our shadow a little bit. It's currently a very sharp shadow. So we can actually make a little bit of a, a, a feather on that. But we're not going to do that. Uh, if you want to, you can with, for example, linear wipe. All the wipes are, um, well, boosters of these kinds of effects. They, uh, they can be used to kind of feather things out, do these kind of things. They're, they're normally, well, I discussed those in, in one of the previous tutorials. Uh, they're kind of filling in the screen with, well, with new stuff. So uh, in this case, if I put it on my shadow, it fills in the screen over time, So or it can. So currently there's nothing, and then it will... Hang on, wipe it in from right to left in this case, over time, if you uh, animate this one. So currently we're going to set that to be over here. So pointing to the top right, and we're going to set the... Oh, sorry, that is not what I wanted. I wanted this to be, like, I don't know, over here. And then we can feather it out. And yeah, you can see that for an actual shadow, this would work. The problem is why I'm, I don't want to do it is because these shadows will never get affected. Or, well, if they do, these shadows will be completely blacked out. So if you use it on the other one, so the one that I showed before that I now turned into something else, but on the, uh, the, the, the circular... I forgot what it's called. Scale wipe, that's what it's called. So if you use it on the scale wipe, it would look okay because it only had a shadow on this side. It didn't have a shadow all across the field. So currently we're going to delete the linear wipe and just say, well, we want sharp shadows. If we don't want sharp shadows, you can of course just hit the T for opacity and um, just change them down a little bit. I personally like them, but yeah, well. Let's set it to 70%. Make it less than it was, maybe 60 even. Make it less than like a fully black one and make it more of a, yeah, a friendly shadow, let's call it. It's all good. You can make whatever you want. So currently, one thing left, and that is to add a logo to it. So we want the, lo the logo to be revealed. By the way, we're going to delete the background because we're going to use this in a new, co new composition. And our new composition, apparently comp 6. Okay. Uh, so comp 5 is going to be the one that we put in there. And then we're going to be able to see what's happening. Um, hello. Why is nothing happening exactly? Oh. I don't know. Oh, 
Yeah, I have this still set to one minute, which is kind of stupid. Anyway, it ends now at two seconds, as I said. So let's say that at um, one and a half seconds, I want to start wiping in my logo. So let's first lo uh, load in my logo. I actually made a logo especially for this one. Ooh, so good. So the logo is going to be on top of the other one. It is um, a transparent picture. So it can be on top of the other one. If you want to make, uh, want to know how to make one, there's a tutorial on my channel. But we're going to scale this first. Uh, let's scale it down until it actually fits somewhat, and then move it upwards. So P for position. Put it into the spot where you want it, and then well, we want it to be behind the other comp. Now we're going to put in the background because, well, if you had a background on comp 5, you wouldn't be able to put this behind the thing. That's why you don't want a background there. Because the background will be in the same picture as the rest of the animation, so you won't be able to slide it in between. So we're going to add a new background. Oh, I already had it loaded. Stone texture. It's going to be this. It is terrible currently, but we're also going to pick a new solid. And the new solid is going to be, let's see, um, everything is blue, right? So let's take a dark blue gray type thing to kind of go with the stones. I don't know if this is too light, but we'll see. To put it all the way in the bottom, then hit the multiply on this one, and then they blend. So currently you can see what the multiply on that thing does, on the shadows. It makes that the blue in the background actually gets multiplied and it actually becomes kind of a blue shadow. If you don't like that, set it to something else. There are plenty of options to, uh, to choose from. So currently the logo is just there. That is of course very ugly. So up until this point it should be invisible. So logo, you are invisible. Um, then we're going to either, well, we can, we can make it come in in several ways, of course. We can either go with just the fade in with transparency, or we can do it somewhat more interestingly and use a wipe. So let's, uh, let's do that. Um, uh, I thought that would be a cool search there term, but Apparently, we need radial wipe. So, yeah, there are so many wipe effects that uh, it doesn't know what to choose. So, we're going to wipe it left to right, whereas the other one wiped right to left. Oh, I need to put it on top of it, I guess, if I'm doing this. With transparency, you want it underneath it. With this one, you want on top of it, I guess. Um, so, at this point, we want it to be 100% because completed 100% means that there's nothing on screen and we're going to set that as a keyframe then at two seconds when the animation ends we want this to be 0% which means the entire thing is done so what it does now it um, it blends with the thing it just goes against it and if you want to fix that yeah you can fix it you just have to reverse your logo so in Photoshop, for example, just flip your logo and then uh, switch the entire layer. So make it like this and then you do rotation, so R, and then you put this to 180 degrees. But yeah, you can see now it's mirrored. So you want to make your logo mirrored and now it does go the right way. So if that's what you want, you can do that. You just have to address the fact that your logo is going to be reversed. Um, the thing I did with my original one, so this was my original one, it has completely different colors, as you will see. So it has more bright colors, uh, it has a different uh, pattern for the, for the dots, but it's all the same. Here you can see that it wipes the other way, and I will show it a little bit quicker now, it also ends at 2. It's pretty much the same as the other one. So there you go. 
and then the, the logo wipes on. But the bottom part is faded on. So the bottom part is um, this shape layer. And you can see that it fades on. Well, actually you can't see because this is in the way. You can see that it, um, it fades on if I now show it to you. There, it comes in very slowly. The other one is still wiped on. But yeah, this uh, so the, the shield is behind the animation, the text is in front of it. And well, that's just the way it is. Uh, you can choose whatever you want, however you want. You can also even, if you want to, so if you want to do this logo thing, let's set this back to zero, and you want it to just 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 do something else with it. Let's um, remove the radial wipe. And let's say you wanted to have a smaller logo. So you want to have, uh, let's see, scale. Let's uh, tune this down a little bit. Let's say you wanted a logo like this, and it kind of is, is um, yeah, you, you want the background to disappear around it. So just go to, um, uh, to your comp, just hit the polygon once again. Just make this mask. Um, yeah, it should be a little bit smaller. I don't know how big it should be. It should be about here. It's because this one's not in the middle apparently. So just pick up your mask, go to stand over here, and then turn your mask into subtract mask. And now uh, we can even adjust that a little bit. Let's see. Mask path. Can we actually? Oh, we can just do expansion. Uh, so yeah, you can wipe out part of your animation to make room for the mask. So yeah, if that's what you want, then that is fine. So we can, uh, for example, uh, yeah, currently it's just wiped out all the time. So we're going to edit that, hit the mask path button, and just say, well, we want to start at this time. I don't really know. And the mask path should be, or no, the expansion should also be tuned. The, the mask path is not going to be done. We're going to set the mask expansion to minus something. So currently, the entire thing will run. Then it will create an opening, and there's your logo. You can do all kinds of things. The, the thing is, you just need to learn how to control all these effects and what to do to do certain stuff. So currently, as you can see, it wipes uh, a space in it, and then it just plops on the mask, or the, the logo, which is fine. You can do whatever you want. The rest of the animation will still run, because all you're doing is making a see-through part of your animation. And that's, it's all good. It's just what you want. So um, if there are any more questions, don't hesitate to ask. And just leave them in the comments so other people can see them as well. And uh, yeah, I will try to answer every one of them. So that's how you make this effect. It uh, it seems to be really nice. You can do really cool stuff with it, especially if you have some bold colors. I currently uh, like the fact that one of them is a completely different color. I did that in the original as well. Uh, you might have noticed that. It is uh, a purple where the rest is all blue and green. But yeah, you can make all kinds of different colors. You can also make it fully red, maybe uh, like fully yellow. Things like that can work out just as well. And um, yeah, I hope you make something really pretty. If you have made something, please uh, leave me a comment as well with the link to where I can find it. Because I would really like to see what people make out of this. Anyway, hope you enjoyed and I will see you next time.